Good morning from Iceland. I'm here today in Reykjavik, the capital city. I'm about to go on one of the day trips uh, they do here, which takes us outside the city. But I'm actually here for work. So in this vlog, I'm gonna take you with me around Iceland over the next few days. And I'm also gonna tell you a little bit more about what I do. But for now, we're up early. We're just about to get the bus. So I wanna make sure that I'm not late and uh, we'll, we'll head on. But uh, yeah, welcome to, to Iceland, which you won't really associate with a building site, but it looks more beautiful the further into the city you get. So if you visit Reykjavik, especially if you're visiting for a few days, this is somewhere you'll probably be quite familiar with um, by the end of your trip. It's BSI bus terminal. So this is where a lot of the excursions and a lot of the day trips start. This is where you pick up your bus to head outside the city um, for the day uh, here in, in Reykjavik, here in Iceland. And it is right next to Reykjavik City Airport. So this isn't the airport I flew into last night. I flew into Keflavik International Airport, which is a bit further south, about 30 miles, something like that. This airport kind of does domestic flights and um, also flights to Greenland, I think. So um, I didn't realize, I, f I forgot from last time that it was so close to the bus terminal. So the bus terminal's there and you can probably hear the plane, you can see it about to take off in the very distance there. Now I'm just about to catch my bus, I don't know which one it is, we're going to go into the bus terminal um, and we'll see. And then we'll head off on the first excursion, the first day trip of this trip. So uh, yeah, let's, let's go and let's head inside. We just arrived here in uh, Geysa, which is the site of the exploding hot spring. I don't know if you can really tell because the skies are similar colour, but there's some steam coming off just there and it's like natural, naturally heated water. Um, it usually smells quite like eggy. <laughs> the last time I came it smelled quite eggy because of like the sulphur. Um, but we'll head across the road now and we'll uh, go and give it a closer inspection. The water here is obviously very hot and um, you need to make sure that you don't get too close and touch it. In fact, just, just here, going back, there's a warning sign, you are here at your own risk. So there must have been incidents in the past where people got a little bit too close for comfort and probably burned themselves. So obviously you need to be careful not to do that. And that just got that weird, <laughs> it's like an eggy smell. Uh, it just hit me then. But as you can see in a minute, yeah. Hot springs are in full effect. We'll get on the path. And yeah, you can see there. So although it's cold outside, the water runs warm. And even here, you've got the temperature. So it's somewhere between 80 and 100 degrees. Just some of the water is actually at boiling point. Second stop now at Gulf, Gulf Ash, which is like the big waterfall here, or one of the, the big waterfalls in it. I'm not sure how much we're going to be able to see of it today because the weather is absolutely shabby, but um, hopefully we'll get a decent glimpse. Whoa, look at that. I don't know how much you can see over the edge, so you can't see right down into the ravine, but um, that's pretty impressive. It's so powerful. Um, it's not, not the biggest waterfall I've seen, but it's just like the, the power it has and it's a bit different. Um, when I've seen waterfalls in like Croatia, um, Argentina, Brazil, and yet you're in a tropical hot climate, there seems something a bit more sinister about it when you're in a cold country. I don't know why, but yeah, uh, this is just yeah, breathtaking. This is so sick from here after last time. It's like, say we didn't get anywhere near to be in this close to the waterfall. And especially on a day like this when the visibility is not great, when you've got so much spray coming off the waterfall and obstructing the view a little bit. It's nice to be able to get this close, to be able to come right to the edge of Gulfos. And it just gives the, the more of a, a rounded experience, I suppose. Back to the bus. Back to the bus. 
So we've arrived at the third and final destination on the Golden Circle Tour. Last time we came, it was actually the first place we arrived at. This time it's the last one before we head back to Reykjavik in, a, in an hour or, or two. Um, and this is Thing Valley National Park. We're going to take a closer look and I'll explain a bit more about what it is when we go up there. So this is Thing Valley National Park, as you can see. It just looks like a vast expanse of countryside, but the significance here is that it kind of spans the boundary between the North American and the Eurasian tectonic plates. So I think we're on the North American side at the moment. I'm not sure if that is the actual definitive boundary, um, but somewhere out there. Um, you can see like little splits and cracks between where the plates are. and uh, we'll head back to Reykjavik shortly. Now I'm, I've got a little bit of a dilemma, I think it's a bit too early to, it's about half four, uh, but a lot of the stuff, that the opening times and things in Iceland aren't really great. Um, things seem to shut quite early and stuff, so I think what I'm going to do is we're going to head back to the apartment now, uh, to the apartment, to the hotel now, uh, and then I've got like a piece I need to write for a magazine, and then I'll head back out for an evening meal in, in a bit. Morning, I went to an Italian restaurant last night, um, which wasn't too far from my, my hotel. Um, I did, got a little bit of work done in between, coming back from the city centre and going out for tea. So I just, to be fair, I got back last night, completely forgot to carry on this, uh, to carry on filming from yesterday. But I'm up this morning now, I'm ready to go out and explore. We're gonna be staying in Reykjavik today. Um, and I'll just quickly give you a little tour of my uh, room. So the tourist board are putting me up in this hotel, Foss Hotel Reykjavik. The floors in here are heated, so they're unbelievable. Um, and it's quite a nice little bathroom, but the room itself uh, is pretty good. Now, Iceland is very expensive, um, so a hotel like this would usually set you back a fair amount. Uh, last time I came and stayed in a hotel called 100 Iceland Hotel. It's got a great location on the main road. It's quite cheap. The room is a lot more basic than this, though, and that's completely fine. Um, because when you come to Iceland, you just need somewhere to base yourself, somewhere you can get your head down, get a shower, go to the toilet, and just chill out for a little bit so um yeah the, the, this this room is like unbelievable the fact that it's got like a desk chairs um and a, a nice comfortable bed and one one thing I, I really do love about this room probably my favorite thing is uh well the view doesn't look great i think the uh winds whip some water up off the sea but the view is absolutely incredible so you can see Halgrim Skirke, the, the church, like one of Iceland's tallest buildings and um, one of the biggest attractions in the city here uh, and then you, this kind of is the city centre, very city centre here we are actually in the city centre but that's the kind of the very centre of it and then you come down here along the waterfront um, and there's this kind of building that looks like a box and that's called Harper, it's like a, a concert hall where they have concerts uh, performances stuff like that. I'm actually going to be going there later so I'm excited for that the reason that I'm actually here um, is because I work for an airport I work for Liverpool Airport uh, in the marketing team and as part of the promotion for a new route which starts in a couple of weeks uh, to Iceland um, with an airline called Play I've come out here to do a bit of social media promotion uh, across all of our channels um, to show people what there is to see and do in Iceland because although you know Iceland is, is a fairly popular tourist destination if I was to walk down the street in, in Liverpool and ask people oh what do you think of Iceland do you know what there is to do there name me three attractions in Iceland uh, a lot of people will probably struggle so um, I'm actually just coming here to show them what what there is to see and do not just in, in Reykjavik but sort of in the uh, in the sort of West Island region I suppose uh, West Iceland region I should say um, and so yes yeah, so yesterday we went on the Golden Circle today we're going to explore the city uh, and then I got a couple of more days after that so uh, I'll bring you along with me and uh, we'll be doing a few uh, you know social media posts TikToks Instagram stories a few roundup posts at the end of the day that kind of thing so uh, I'll take you with me and uh, we'll go and explore Reykjavik City let's let's head out this is one of my favorite breakfast things in the world so it's skier which is it's like yogurt technically it's a cheese um, and this banana flavor they don't they sell skier at home they don't have this banana flavor at home i've only met, ever managed to find it in iceland i mean skier is icelandic so that's not surprising but it's just a shame when they have so many flavors of it at home the banana one's not available so you gotta come here to get it last time we came we had the little tubs come with a spoon just to roll them how often they don't have it this time, but they do have um, the, these little pouches. So, yeah, we're gonna have this now, and I, I genuinely cannot wait because, like I say, 
one of my favourite breakfast things in the world. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> so good. It's such a nice banana taste, and it's not too unhealthy either. Absolutely smart. Now on Rainbow Street, last time I was here, this road wasn't painted, it was just grey and it leads right up to where we're going to head now, Halgrim Skirker, the Lutherian Church here. As you can tell probably by the people behind me, it's not that busy. If you look around the streets at the moment, there's only the odd person. Things tend to open at like 10 o'clock here in Iceland typically um, and it's about quarter to 10 now. But I've just been down there with it rainbow part of the road is and you've got a couple of people waiting in a queue to take photos so it's definitely one of the city's most popular uh, photo opportunities but i've got got what i needed from there we're just gonna carry on heading up this road to uh to the church you can see plenty of people lining up to get a photo in front of halgrim skirka you can go inside you can go up uh, the structure as well to the top. I think there's a viewing platform just up there, which I've never been to um, before, so I'm hoping to get there this morning. Apparently, it's only open from 10 till half 10, and then it opens at another couple of hours throughout the day. I think that's because it's a Sunday. Uh, they've got masses on um, today, uh, so that you know people go to services and things. Um, but hopefully, we'll get up there and just wait. There's going to be a bit of a queue developing and head over to where the door is now. Get right close <laughs> to hopefully can be on the first and maybe only people up this morning. 9.59 on the clock, one minute. This bad boy will be open. The church is open, so we're in the main part of it now. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the tower is open. There was a barrier over it, and it was closed. So I don't know if they just not opened it yet, or they're not opening it today, because it is very windy here, so I kind of will get that. You know, so I might have to come back on a, on a different day. I lied, just got my ticket now. And we're about to head up the tower. Wow, well, so you're in the clock faces here. That's amazing. So you can see the clocks on the outside, they go around every side, and here, that's where I am at the moment. You can see a little bit of the view outside the clock, but we'll head upstairs before anyone else gets there. I don't know if you can hear the whistling of the wind. <laughs> so it was windy down there, it's gonna be really windy up here. Hopefully not, not too bad. Rainbow Street where we were before. I'm in here because it's covered, so you might be able to hear me through the wind. Uh, but I'll just give you a sneak peek now, uh, and apologies for your ears that are about to get destroyed by this wind. We're now here at one of my favourite places in Reykjavik, Cola Ported, which is their flea market. It's only open on Saturdays and Sundays. But if you're traveling on a budget, this is one of the places you want to come. Because um, as I'll show you in a minute, they've got food, they've got souvenirs, and it's generally cheaper uh, than when you go around the stores and the, the restaurants in, in the city centre. So if you want to get a bit of a bargain, if you want to spend a little bit less money on your food um, and something to take home with you, this is the place you'll, you'll want to come. It has changed a heck of a lot in here since I was last in. So last time, this was still here, this like little um cafe restaurant thing but all of this was like it was rows and rows of stalls selling things like souvenirs that sort of stuff um and it is like still like a bit of a flea market in here but it's definitely not on the same scale as it was when i was here last time what thing do you still have in here from last time i was here 
is fermented chalk, rotten chalk, basically a try date. One, two, three. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Oh my god, that's, I'm getting a fish bowl. Gab, can I just... Like, the aftertaste is absolutely, like, revolting. Do not. Yeah. I actually want to be sick. Like, that is the worst tasting thing I've ever had in my life. Like, that is... Ugh. I never want ever to try rotten shark ever again. That is minging. It was the worst thing I've ever had. So here. The texture is terrible, the smell is terrible, the taste is terrible. Essentially what they do is they catch a shark, they hang it up in some shed um, by the coast for like months. The flesh starts to rot, they cut it up and then save it up here and that's just one of their delicacies. Obviously Icelandic people like it, otherwise they won't sell it. But for my taste, it was absolutely horrendous. We're about to get a ferry to the island that's straight ahead of me, just in front of their mountains, but just over the water. It's called Vidi Island, one of the most beautiful spots in Reykjavik. It is a little, I think it's a little north of the city centre, and it's probably about an hour's walk. I'm quite a fast walker, so I've got here in about 45 minutes. Um, but I'd recommend taking the walk because the views on the coast are incredible. So it's all this way down here, the ferry is there, the little hut where you buy your tickets from is there, and um, there's a sign in the window, unbelievably, saying that all ferry tours to Vidya are cancelled today. Now, yeah, it's windy, and you know, the water's a bit choppy and stuff, but the boats should be able to handle it. That is so annoying. Like, like, it's not just because I come all the way down here, but you know, part of the uh, reason I'm here is to promote, you know, things to do in Reykjavik in Iceland. And one of the best things to do here, genuinely, is this Vidi Island. And unfortunately, it's just shut today. Um, oh, yeah. So I, I don't know what's going on. I'm guessing it's closed because of the weather. Um, but in my opinion, that shouldn't really. It, but in my opinion, you know, you've got blue skies, yeah, it's a bit windy. But people would still, I'm sure, want to go on there. Um, and I actually, <laughs> I had the website with the schedule up on my phone, but I didn't go on the homepage. So I'm guessing on the homepage, it might have said that the ferries are cancelled today, and it was even coming all the way down here. But I can still walk to the end of this pier. It gets you fairly close to um, Vidi Island. And at least we can sort of see it. To be fair, this shows you how windy it is. Look at that. <laughs> Although not seeing Vidi Island this time was a disappointment, I am fortunate enough to have visited before. So here are some shots of what it does look like from the last time I was there. I do recommend going yourself, but perhaps it's best to call ahead rather than do what I did and get all the way down there only to find that it's not even on. After having a look at Vidi from across the water, it was time to head back to the city centre for the final attraction of the day. So it's been behind me up next, Harper is the kind of concert where a lot of concerts, shows, that kind of thing go on here in Reykjavik. I've been inside before but never to see a show, so we're going to go and see the Youth Symphony Orchestra, or the Youth, youth Icelandic Symphony Orchestra, so it's a really good one. This is like foyer here, uh, really nice. I think we go upstairs to go in. We'll have a head up there now. That was very good. The, uh, the Youth Symphony Orchestra was so impressive. It was just really cool to go and see that kind of show before because it's not something that I've done. The only thing was it was an hour. Now I think the tickets were something like 30, 35 pounds, something like that. So I don't know. I'm not I, I wouldn't expect them to like go for like a full like two, three hours, like something like that. But I thought maybe a little bit long, maybe an hour and a half would have um, being a bit better for the price, but then everything is expensive in Iceland, so I suppose that's what you're expecting. It was good that it was, you know, it didn't drag on too long, but it was enough that you got a good idea and a good taste uh, of that kind of thing, really. So I would definitely recommend coming to a show here at Harper. Youth Symphony Orchestra of Iceland, they were class as well, so they're a 
over I'll go and see them and if there's another show on just just for the the room it was a, amazing really just the, the theatre or the auditorium whatever you want to call it I'd recommend you go to watch any show in there really just about to go and hear Clem or Mattel or Mattel I don't know how you say it and um, but this was another thing it wasn't here last time it's like a food hall and that's the great thing about visiting somewhere that you've not been for a while you know I've come to Iceland five, five and a half years ago now which um, when I think about the trip, it doesn't seem that long ago, but when I actually say five and a half years, half a decade, that's insane. It makes me think, Jesus Christ, like, wow, that much time has passed. But yeah, like, like last time I come to Iceland, quite a few things um, I've done already weren't here or weren't available to do. So there's always a reason to go back to a place. Um, and I think something like this just proves that. Inside the food hall, I tried a couple of different things from a couple of different places, including a cheese plate, some tacos, and a beer. And I was really impressed not only by the choice on offer, but also the atmosphere. Definitely want to add to the itinerary. I'll be back soon with another video from my Iceland trip. And if you have any questions about visiting the country, about my job, or anything else, just drop them in the comments. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.